Okay, now we uh, talk a bit about the CMOS manufacturing process uh, to, to um, consider what uh, are the main um, aspects related to the fabrication of integrated circuits and uh, some aspects related to the, their design. So first, let, let's look at the uh, first line of these blocks. Uh, there is this uh, step from circuit design to fabrication. We start with a complete design of the circuit. From then we can derive a set of optical masks that are going to be used in the fabrication process. So the main output of circuit design is a set of optical masks that go to a foundry, to a silicon foundry, and that will be used to uh, fabricate the integrated circuit. The fabrication process is something independent on the independent of the optical masks. By changing the, ma the masks, we can change the type of circuit that is fabricated. Okay. And. Uh, um, let's uh, let's first uh, uh, consider this aspect of the fabrication process then we go back uh, this is a picture of a very simple and quite old example of uh, a CMOS process a very basic one uh, this is uh, um, the cross section of an inverter a CMOS inverter so the corresponding circuit is the one that we have uh, considered up to now. So we have uh, a PMOS and an NMOS that are connected together and then the two sources go to VDD and to ground and this is the output. So this is the PMOS, this one, this is the NMOS, the NMOSFET, NMOS stays for NMOSFET. Uh, let's consider together the, the situation. We have uh, um, a silicon wafer, which is this one. This is the thickness of the silicon wafer that is typically P doped. Uh, this is a P. P minus means that uh, the minus means that we have a very light P type of doping. And uh, uh, you should consider that the thickness of this wafer is less than one millimeter is like slightly less than one millimeter something like 0 0.8 0 0.9 millimeters then uh, on uh, in, in the, the first thing that is uh, created into the, um, the the wafer is this n well this is uh, the well means a region uh, that is uh, uh, doped with donors, so it becomes N-type. And in, in, in the end, well, one can fabricate the P-MOSFET, and in a P-substrate, one fabricates the N-MOSFET. This type of process is called N-well process because there is just one well of N-type. Uh, so regarding the, the N-MOS, you should be able to recognize the different uh, uh, parts these M plus regions on the on the left and on the right of the gate are the source and the drain. So this is the source, and this is the drain. And of course, the the body of the NMOS is uh, P doped. So M plus source and drain and P doping of the of the body. Let us obtain an N-channel transistor. Then we have uh, this, this part, which is the gate oxide. 
and the black part on top of it is the polysilicon gate polysilicon is very highly doped post polycrystalline silicon so it behaves as the gate contact on top of it we have uh, some uh, um, a, 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 this is an additional metallization on top of the polysilicon gate so this is uh, the gate sorry this is the gate source and drain this is the metal line that goes to the to the source this one that go the, and therefore this goes to ground and uh, and uh, this other one is the metal contact to the drain that goes uh, is this point so it goes uh, in contact with the drain of the PMOS which will be this one so in practice we will have uh, these two contacted together and this will be the output of the inverter this uh, part here is called locos this uh, darker gray here is a uh, locos stands for local oxide and this an, is basically an oxidation which behaves as a as an insulator in order to insulate the metal on the top from the silicon on the bottom so from the top you only see these contacts of the source the gate and the drain and the same contacts for the p-mosfet so essentially the same thing happens for the p-mosfet with the only difference that everything is realized on an end well of course we have the drain and the source contacts that are p plus doped this plus if it means very highly doped so we have a very highly doped a very high doping of p type for the drain and for the source and then again we have this exactly the same situation gate oxide polysilicon and metal on top uh, no I'm wrong this is not the metal on top this is uh, the, the metal uh, uh, here there's no metal basically it, or, or if there is some metal is in the, the same black region with the polysilicon uh, let me correct now here this is not a metal this is again uh, oxide because this has to insulate the gate from the metal contact is this is exactly the same color as the locus okay I was wrong right okay the metal is uh, the, this light gray here okay so here we have an oxide and this black is the polysilicon and then below we have the get oxide as in the case of the end mosfet this part is the con the metal contact to the source of the p mosfet so it goes to vdd and uh, as you can uh, see the two gates on the back of this cross section are connected together because they are the input of the transistor so this gate and the other gate you should you should think at that, that on the back of this cross section they are connected together in the input terminal of the of the CMOS inverter so essentially in order to fabricate a CMOS inverter such as this we need to be able to selectively dope some regions N type or P type because you see that the, the structure is obtained by having N type regions and adjacent to P type regions and so on and then we need to be able to deposit layers of insulators of polysilicon and of metals with uh, some specific pattern depositing them only in some regions and not on other regions so 
so this is a, na a snapshot of the final result let's look le let's see what happens when we a bit later we will look at what happens when we do it step by step as i mentioned at the beginning this is a very simple very basic CMOS process uh, a more advanced one is this one it, it, it's a uh, more modern it is it is not the most modern but it's, it is uh, relatively more modern you, you should be able to see some differences this is called th the characteristics of this process are dual well and trench isolated so the structure is exactly the same is a CMOS inverter again this is the PMOS on this part and this is the NMOS instead uh, l let's look at the main differences instead of having a instead of having a single N well we have two wells a P well and an N well so we start from the substrate this is the the, the, the the silicon wafer on top of the wafer we have this uh, layer that is called P epi this epi stays for epitaxial Epitaxial silicon is uh, silicon uh, grown by epitaxy, which is a process that allows to grow a very um, pure layer of silicon. Very pure from the point of view of the presence of impurities and from the point of view of the presence of defects. So we have a thin layer. This epitaxial layer is very thin, just a few micron thick, of very pure silicon crystal on top of which we can realize that we can fabricate the two devices the, the MOSFET the P MOSFET and the N MOSFET with very high quality so a peak, uh, uh, so we start from the wafer and then we grow a thin layer of epitaxial silicon let me see if I can it's a so the, this uh, epitaxial silicon is very lightly doped so we can assume that it is so it is almost an insulator then in order to realize the NMOS we have to make a P well uh, with, with a higher level of uh, uh, P type dopants and then again we make the NMOS transistor so the two M plus uh, source this is the source and this is the drain then the insulator th the the um, uh, poly this is the poly and then one of the differences is that uh, you see these purple lines here on top of the contacts on top of the N plus regions and on top of the poly this is uh, a titanium silicide it, it is T oops. titanium this, the chemical symbol is TI silicide And this uh, uh, material is uh, it's essentially a metal, it's a very low resistivity and it is used to improve the quality of the contacts, to reduce the resistivity of the contacts. And it, it, it's used almost for every contact. Then we do the same for the PMOS transistor, except for the fact that we make an N well, because we need an N body for the and for the p-type transistor then we have the drain and the source that are uh, p-doped p-plus doped and then we have the silicide and again the same structure as before so 
the two drains if you remember are connected to the output so this is the output these are metal lines okay this is metal they are metal interconnections so we have two contacts with the metal interconnections the source goes to the ground and the source of the PMOS transistors goes to VDD as before so you, as you can see on top of the transistors we have metal interconnections running all over the, the circuit in order to connect the different transistors so the metal interconnections are on a higher plane with respect to the transistors and build the circuit essentially because they make all the interconnections yeah. also in this case on the back we okay. have uh, uh, the the two p poly of the gate the two the two um, highly doped poly of the gate are connected together in order to uh, to have the input of the inverter okay the other uh, main difference with respect to the older process that we have seen before is this trench isolation the trench isolated process the, the, the trench are this one these are trenches this one they are made of silicon oxide as the locus uh, in, the, in, the, in the previous example the, f the, the main difference is that we have very steep uh, very steep sides in the, in the locus you have this type of, uh, of uh, shape in the trench you have very steep a, a real trench you have a steep edge and this in practice allows to uh, make the whole structure much more compact and therefore much smaller and trench isolation is something that we have since uh, uh, since the second half of the 90s it's a relatively recent process okay uh, now we need to uh, understand uh, how we arrive at this structure starting from a single silicon wafer a wafer is a slice of a much larger silicon crystal um, before we do that uh, it's interesting to have a look at the same structure that we have seen before of an inverter seen from the top of the wafer from the top of the slice okay we have seen the cross section <laughs> let's look at it from the top and uh, ju just to, to consider a little uh, circuit that is a little bit larger let's assume that we have two cascaded inverters one inverter whose output is the input of the second of the second inverter okay the situation that it is shown here so this is the like the lay so-called layout view the the same uh, view seen from the top okay so uh, with some uh, with some uh, let's say uh, training one I I it's it is very able to recognize uh, soon the two shapes this is the first inverter this is the second inverter basically i, I, I can uh, put uh, so this is the input of the first inverter this one is the NMOS and this one is the PMOS and the two drains are connected together and then we have the output of the first PMOS okay so le let's look at the, uh, at the, the structure in, in some more detail so this uh, purple line here is the um, is the uh, polysilicon of the two gates polysilicon is a good conductor especially if there is a silicon a titanium silicide layer on top so instead of use of having uh, a metal that connects the two gates with the input we have a polysilicon which goes below the layer of metals so this is poly 
the same poly that we discussed before. And this uh, black square is a contact. And this blue line is the metal layer, is the first uh, so-called layer of metal, the, the lowest one. Okay, so we have uh, in, in this black, uh, when we have the black contact, we have the metal layer, which is in contact with the polysilicon layer. So in physical contact and also in electrical contact. And then below here, we have the N and MOS. This, uh, this um, uh, yellow, light yellow region is the P well. And uh, in, in the P-well, we have this uh, uh, green region, which is the regions that is highly N-doped. This is the M-plus region. So the M-plus region goes from the source to under the gate. Then it's not below the gate because the, the, the gate screens the doping. So we have uh, no doping below the gate and then we have doping of course in the drain region okay this is a very critical step of of, of CMOS technology and, and very important from the historical point of view the fact that we were that, 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 that people were able to let's say um, use uh, the gate in order to to define the doping in the drain and in the source regions it's called self-aligned process because the presence of the gates aligns the, the doping. And then we have, this uh, is the contact between the source and the metal, and this is the, the, the ground. So this is the contact that I've shown you from the cross section. And then we have another contact from the drain to the metal that goes to the output. And then, of course, this is connected to the drain of the P MOSFET which is this one the P MOSFET is uh, um, above as you can see it is uh, wider and we have discussed this issue if you remember in order to have a balanced inverter we need to have the 2k of the two transistors equal and since the mobility of electrons is larger than the mobility of holes we need to have wider transistors for the P MOSFET so in this case, it's almost twice as large as the MOSFET. The, the length of the gate is the same, but of course the, the device is wider. And uh, the structure is essentially the same. This pink region is the N well in which the P MOSFET is, in, is fabricated. And then again, we have uh, this is the P plus region this is the p plus region we have the drain here the source here the source is connected to this metal line which is the supply voltage and uh, and uh, that's it okay this other contact here that you can see is a contact between the n well and vdd so let me write the contact between N, uh, N well and VDD, which is always the case in digital uh, um, logic. And here we have a contact, contact between P well and ground GND which also happens in all uh, logic gates so of course the second structure is exactly identical to the first one you have the, the second inverter So you see that we in, in this layout, we use different colors in order to indicate different types of layers. Uh, a color can indicate metal or can indicate a polysilicon, so a different type of material, but can also indicate a different type of doping because we have the doping for the N-well, which is pink, the doping for the P-well, which is yellow, the doping for 
the M plus which is uh, which is uh, green and so on okay actually uh, the doping for the M plus and the P plus should not have the same color because it's a different type of of, uh, of doping and uh, and uh, yeah it should be uh, different but uh, when I said before what happened um, when I said before that from the design of the circuit we have a set of masks I mean in exactly this thing from the design of the circuit we have uh, l let's look at the detail steps from the design of the circuit we have a layout a physical layout of the complete circuit in which as here we are defining every region of the of the chip in terms of doping and of different layers and then for each layer for each type of layer we have a different optical masks that will be used to realize this layout onto silicon okay and now we, sh we should try to understand exactly how it is done So the, uh, the, the main message here is that once the technology is, uh, is ready and we have a foundry, the only way in which we, 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 we say the foundry exactly what type of integrated circuit has to be fabricated is to send a set of masks. So all the information about the chip, uh, the electrical circuit, how it works and so on is in the set of masks. It's the only degree of, of freedom that we have. So let's look at, uh, at the fabrications. We start from a silicon ingot. Uh, it's, a, it's a very large piece of silicon, a crystalline silicon, very high quality, uh, pretty expensive. The typical diameter is uh, 300 millimeters and the length is uh, something more than uh, one meter. It's li like a large mortadella, if you have never seen one, of very, very large. And the, 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 w the weight is uh, about 100 kilograms. So it's, uh, it's created from uh, uh, melt silicon, which is very slowly um, uh, very s w w which whose temperature is reduced very slowly um, with, with the process that I want to show you a, a video of so but but, but then it's uh, uh, the, the, the important message is that it has to be with very high quality very which means very low percentage of impurities uh, as crystalline uh, as possible and uh, and uh, large then uh, wafers are cut. We basically cut slices of this ingot and we have uh, uh, so each of these slice is called a wafer and it has a thickness of less than one millimeter. It's very thin, it's very fragile also and on that silicon wafer uh, a few hundred chips will be realized few hundred or few thousand chips will be realized uh, if, if you uh, consider let's say a chip can be at most the one two centimeters square at least the one millimeter squared so it can be then the number of uh, chips that you can fabricate on a single wafer is extremely large then all the uh, the layers are realized with a so-called photolithographic process and uh, uh, so a photolithographic process consists in realizing this uh, cir this cycle which consists of different uh, steps uh, a few times once for each uh, layer that we want to realize so let's start from here and let's look at at the different uh, steps. Uh, all this process is realized in a so-called clean room, 
of class from 1 to 10. Uh, class 1 means that we have in the clean room less than one dust, of, uh, one dust particle per cubic foot. So these, uh, these clean rooms are very special um, uh, environments. One need to uh, wear um, special clothing and, and uh, the, the way in which this uh, um, class one is realized is really by uh, uh, taking care that no dust enters the room. So people have to change clothes when they enter completely and then there is a, a, a pressure inside the room which is higher than the outside pressure in order to push uh, possible dust outside and, and not letting dust in. So we start uh, the typical process uh, considering the, the wafer start with an oxidation here we start from here in an oxidation uh, at a temperature of, uh, of uh, typically 1000 Celsius degree, we have uh, a thin layer of silicon oxide which is grown on top of the silicon layer. Then we have a uh, uh, photoresist coating, some photoresist, which is a uh, uh, special polymer sensitive to light is uh, 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 placed on top of uh, the silicon wafer very thin layer of about one micron and then we have the main photolithographic step we have the so-called stepper exposure we have an optical mask which defines a, a layer one of the layers in one of the colors that I've of the symbolic colors that I've shown you before. And then this, um, this optical mask uh, um, exposes the photoresist. And in with this uh, uh, step, which is very similar to printing, we can change the uh, physical properties of the photoresist which is exposed to light with respect to the photoresist which is not exposed to light and then after that we have a photoresist development uh, that allows to remove the part of photoresist which is uh, depending on the type of photoresist the type of photoresist for example which has been exposed to light with respect to the other you know there are two different types of photoresists uh, one type of photoresist is for example not so uh, not soluble before exposure to light and then after exposure to light becomes soluble so that it can be easily removed or other types of photoresists are the opposite are soluble to light before exposure and becomes not soluble after exposure to light and then we develop and one is able to remove the only the soluble part uh, so before we, we we close the loop let, let's uh, let, let's uh, uh, repeat this uh, this uh, um, let's look at an example in order to understand exactly what it means so uh, this is uh, uh, an example of a process step we want to pattern some SiO2 SiO2 means silicon oxide for example the silicon oxide is required for the gates of the transistors we only need to have a layer of silicon oxide where we have the gates of the transistor and of course then we, we need to, to pattern it and uh, it, it goes like this we start from a silicon wafer so this is the wafer then we grow the SiO2 layer that we want and then on top of it we deposit the photoresist okay so Typically, the, the photoresist is deposited uh, by dropping an ink 
a dropping uh, a drop of, of photoresist which is a which is a liquid polymer on top of the wafer which is spinning around so that the photoresist goes on uh, 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 on every place of the wafer and uh, um, yeah builds a very thin layer so then we put the photoresist the, 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 the wafer with the photoresist in the so-called stepper the lithographic stepper with the mask we have uh, again this this um, uh, wafer on top of it we have the mask and then we have ultraviolet light so the mask is uh, uh, made with uh, glass and there are some transparent regions and some opaque regions for example let's assume that this is opaque that the black line is the opaque region the rest is transparent so if we put a mask on top of the of the wafer it means that the region below the opaque uh, part of the mask is not irradiated with UV light and so does not change while the region that is uh, below the transparent uh, part of the mask is irradiated with UV and then it's exposed so it changes in, 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 uh, in uh, physical properties so let's assume that uh, this photoresis is of the type that before exposure is soluble and after exposure is not soluble anymore becomes hardened okay then we we have the um, so-called development like in the printing process the analog printing process we have the development with uh, some chemical uh, or, or plasma etching some uh, some chemical reactions we remove the resist uh, which is uh, uh, removable and we keep the, which is soluble or removable and we keep the hardened one so we have uh, the pattern which uh, has been passed from the mask to the uh, to the silicon wafer and then we can uh, do some uh, uh, we can use some chemicals in order to remove the oxide so we make an a the removal of, uh, of uh, a part of a layer is called etching we chemically attack or chemically or chemically and physically attack the silicon oxide below and the uh, hardened resist acts as a mask stops the chemical attack so can so that we can remove the silicon oxide layer only when where there is no resist on top and so after after that we use uh, a different type of attack of chemical attack that is able to remove also the hardened resist and in the end we have the pattern of, of the silicon pattern pattern silicon which is uh, deposited on the um, silicon region okay so essentially this is uh, uh, we have closed the step because after photoresist development we uh, make this acid etching in order to remove the silicon oxide and then we can uh, remove uh, here we remove the we remove the hardened, hardened resist no this is here So this is the phot photoresist removal. This is the process step. Uh, uh, this does not mean does not mean anything. Basically, after the etching, 
we can, uh, we, we, for example, in, in the case uh, that I've shown you before, we uh, etch the silicon oxide and then uh, we remove the photoresist. No, these two steps can be, uh, they're not interested, they can be uh, skipped, okay? And then we do it again and again for each different type of layer. Okay, so uh, w when I said probably at the beginning, the, the so-called photolithographic process is very similar to printing to the old analog uh, way of uh, um, exposing uh, uh, photographic film and, and, and developing it. It's very similar in, in, in principle. And uh, um, of course, uh, uh, the, you, you you can you can you can you, you can see the let's say the the, the, the difficulty in, in terms of number of steps that you have to make the number of steps that have to be made you know to fabricate a complete silicon chip are in the order of a few hundreds and the process is done with a whole wafer in in uh, in parallel so typically all the chips in a single wafer are fabricated at the same time and then only at the end the different integrated circuits are cut from the wafer okay let's uh, so this is the for example final uh, a final result this is the, the all wafer all these uh, uh, rectang rectangles there are different processors different silicon chips so single wafer is done at the same time and then at the end one only needs to cut the, the wafer into slices and to extract the different ICs. So w what are the, uh, the types of uh, um, recurring process steps? As I have shown you at the beginning, we have uh, um, uh, different types of layers. We have uh, silicon regions of silicon that are doped with P dopants or, or with N dopants with different uh, concentrations, and this is the doping process. Or we have uh, different types of layer that are deposited on top of the silicon or on top of the other layers, and they can be metals or insulators or polysilicon and in that case we use the deposition process <coughs> uh, regarding doping we have two different types of doping we have uh, one process that is called diffusion and basically we put the uh, wafer in an oven and uh, some uh, uh, in the presence of some gas with dopants at a very high temperature be between 900 and, and some more than 1000 degrees and what happens is that the dopants penetrate into the silicon layer and diffuse in it so this is the reason why the, the process is called diffusion we need to put everything at a very high temperature in order to uh, to um, uh, facilitate diffusion and typically we have something that uh, is uh, a, a, a profile a concentration profile in terms of uh, the depth of uh, of the silicon um, wafer that is something like this okay this is the thickness of the wafer let's assume that this phase is exposed to the doping gas then the dopants penetrate and of course the concentration is higher uh, close to the surface and decreases when it go inside of the wafer and typically the more time you you keep uh, um, you keep the process running the uh, the deeper the dopants penetrate but still we have this gradient then there is another process that is uh, very commonly used, which is called ion implantation. With ion implantation, we have an ion gun. Basically, uh, the, the dopants are shot into the 
silicon wafer at a certain energy and therefore penetrate the wafer and in that case with ion implantation so they are shot into the into the wafer without implantation depending on the energy uh, that the ions have at the moment they are shot we have a different penetration in the in the wafer so typically we have something like this okay the 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 depth has a maximum at some point in the middle in, in, in of the of the wafer and then you can change the position of the maximum by changing the energy with which you uh, shoot the ions okay the uh, drawback of the second process is that you have some lattice lead damage because the ions the doping ions that you shoot into the into the wafer uh, sometimes hurt with the uh, with, with, with the silicon atoms and then displace the silicon atoms from the crystal so typically you need uh, an aline, a, a subsequent annealing step which means you need to put the wafer into an oven at a very high temperature in order to let the 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 the, the, the uh, silicon wafer to heal itself to to, to the, by putting the silicon wafer into an oven you let the the, the silicon atoms to uh, readjust again and to recover their initial position in the lattice okay of course in order to do this process you can use uh, some layer as a mask so you need to pattern the silicon wafer by leaving for example some hardened uh, photoresist as i've shown you before and this hardened photoresist acts as a barrier to diffusion or as a barrier to ion implantation so that one can have a, um, a pattern onto the silicon wafer okay uh, as far as the deposition is concerned of course there are different um, there are many different types of deposition mainly depending on the type of material that one wants to deposit for example the oxidation is the easiest way to deposit silicon to to, depo to deposit a layer of silicon oxide because we have actually a growth of silicon oxide we expose the silicon wafer to an, an atmosphere rich of oxygen and we have a, chem a chemical reaction at the surface between the oxygen and the silicon and the, this chemical reaction is of course an oxidation so we have a layer of silicon oxide on top of the wafer that is let's say doable only for the silicon oxide um, in, in all the other cases we have not a growth but a real deposition uh, for example in the case of chemical vapor deposition the silicon wafer is exposed to um, a gas which contains the, the um, species that we want to deposit at a very high temperature and from the vapor there's a chemical reaction with the silicon and we have a deposition of the material that we want and of course also in this case we can have a layer a patterned layer of uh, um, photoresist on the bottom on the silicon wafer that uh, allows to have the position only in the regions where we have holes of photoresist and not when we have the photoresist okay and so on the process is is always the same the chemical deposition is is very very similar to the chemical vapor deposition so i mean the, the difference is very small there's no need to to to, to, to mention it in the case of sputtering which is typically used for aluminum and for other me uh, other metals we have uh, um, a, a different situation we, we start by putting in uh, an oven which is actually in this case called an evaporator the silicon wafer with uh, some uh, 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 with a piece of aluminum for example and this piece of aluminum is uh, bombarded with ions 
in order to let the aluminum evaporate and deposit onto the surface of the wafer and in this case we have uh, uh, a layer of aluminum onto the wafer of course these uh, different uh, methods differ in terms of the quality of the layer that you that, that one is able to obtain on the, the quality of the material that one is able to obtain on the on the accuracy of the thickness for example that is achievable and so on but again the way to to use this process these processes in order to obtain a certain part pattern on the silicon wafer is to use uh, an exposed photoresist that has to act as a mask for the as a, as a as a barrier for the process okay uh, then other the other important process steps are etching and uh, uh, planarization uh, so etching is very important because etching allows to define three-dimensional patterns to remove material as I mentioned before we wanted to remove the oxide or sometimes you want to remove uh, the silicon on, on, on the bottom in order to remove the material we need to have uh, uh, let's say a, a chemical reaction or a mix or chemical and physical uh, let's say action chemical reaction and physical action there are two types of etching one is wet etching and the other one is plasma etching with wet etching we typically use an acid solution or a basic solution on top of the silicon wafer basically we wash the, 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 the surface of the wafer with this acid solution and the, and the basic solution and uh, by doing that uh, there is a, a, a chemical reaction which uh, uh, removes the material which is exposed to the to the acid or basic solution okay we are basically washing I'm not, I'm, that is washing between brackets but that that is the case for example f in order to remove silicon oxide as in the case that i've shown before one has to use hydrofluoridic acid okay is the better way to, to remove it uh, the particular aspects are of wet etching is that of course when you do it do that the process is almost uh, isotropic so for example if one if one wants to remove uh, a thick layer with wet etching typically wet etching let's say uh, digs a bit under the, the 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 region where we have the holes this for example is the hardened resist and one removes a lot of material until uh, until we have a stop here okay so this is the other material that we have with dry etching we have no solution we have uh, a, a gas which uh, uh, it basically a jet of gas which is uh, um, which is sent uh, onto the surface of the silicon wafer and then removes the material and in this case the main uh, important aspect is that uh, the, the removal is strongly anisotropic we do not uh, dig below the, the resist in the case of dry or plasma etching really we are able to dig a hole uh, which is vertical with respect to the uh, hardened resist level so this is the dry etching this is the wet etching the wet etching is easier but of course is less usable for for um, very small features because one has to take into account the fact that uh, there is some under digging and then uh, the the last process that I want to mention is the so-called planarization that is important in order to flatten the top surface because after some layers are deposited on top of the wafer we start to have bumps and holes and therefore the surface is not planar anymore and this uh, uh, 
planarization process which is called the CMP chemical mechanical polishing uses an abrasive component in order to flat the surface to flatten the surface of the wafer so doping um, uh, doping deposition etching and planarization uh, except for planarization the other three processes are uh, patterned by using the photolithographic process so let's uh, uh, consider uh, um, a simplified process flow step by step in order to fabricate uh, um, an end MOSFET uh, just think in terms of the cross section of the inverted that we have seen before basically we start by defining the active areas and the uh, to make the trenches with uh, dry etching the trenches that has that have to separate the different transistors and to fill them with uh, uh, insulator with silicon oxide okay so uh, we start with the uh, uh, active areas and the trenches then after that we have uh, the the wells the N well and the P well that are obtained with implantation. So first the, tren the, the, the trenches that separate the devices, then the implantation of the wells, N well and P well. And then we have uh, the deposition of the gate oxide and of the polysilicon layer in order to, have to, to define the two gates and then when we have defined the gates the gates the gate are able to act as a, a mask for the doping of the source and of the drain regions so we can make the implantation of the source and the drain regions and uh, also the source contacts and then we can create the contact and deposit the metal layers on top okay uh, now we will look at some picture in order to, to follow the sequence so but first we have to separate the devices with the head with the trenches then well implant then the gate stack gate oxide and polysilicon layer then after the gate stack the source and drain implantation and then the con the metal contacts the contacts for the metal regions okay so let's uh, let's uh, repeat it with, with 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 images so we start from the wafer this is the wafer of course the uh in the layers are not in scale so we start with a wafer on top of the wafer we have the growth of the epitaxial layer of silicon and this is the um the material from which we start then we have uh, the uh, deposition of the gate oxide and of nitride layer. This is silicon nitride. It, it, it's called sacrificial. layer or sacrificial nitride uh, because uh, it's used as it's used as a barrier for ion implantation and then it's removed so it only serves uh, as, a, as a barrier but does not remain in the in the process so uh, here we need we need to think that we uh, let, let, let's go on then then i can comment again so p epi then the gate oxide and then the plasma etching so with uh, with a mask uh, again we we expose uh, the, the so, so, so these regions and then we remove these regions in order to do that we need the plasma etching in order to cut <coughs> the, the the sides of the trenches in a, in a vertical shape 
and this allows us to, to separate the two devices that we are going to fabricate because assuming that the epitaxial layer is, since the epitaxial layer is, is an insulating material, then this region and the second region are not connected from the electrical point of view, okay? So after doing that, we have uh, the trench filling. In the holes, in the trenches that we have fabricated, we deposit some uh, oxide layer and then we need to planarize to flatten the surface because of course otherwise we will have uh, the same thickness of, of, uh, of uh, oxide over the whole um, wafer and, and therefore we would not have a flat surface. So we have trench filling, we deposit silicon oxide in order to fill the trenches and then planarization in order to flatten the top surface. So at this point we can uh, remove the sacrificial nitride because the sacrificial nitride has been used in this case uh, uh, simply because uh, I didn't mention it but in order to do the plasma etching uh, uh, the, the, the resist is not sufficient as a barrier so we need the resist plus the silicon nitride layer so that is used as a barrier and then is removed because it's not uh, is, is not uh, uh, to be used anymore <coughs> then once we have these two regions we can uh, we can define the N well and the VTP adjust implant this is something that I didn't mention. Typically, we need an additional implantation to finely tune the value of the threshold voltage of the P-MOSFET. So in this region, we want to fabricate the P-MOSFET. We first implant the N-well, and then we make a slight implant in order to adjust the, the doping, in order to adjust the, the value of the threshold voltage. This, as you can see here, is only done when we want to have the P-well. When we want to have uh, the N-MOSFET, for example, we do not need the P-Well, and then we have, uh, uh, um, we have the regions covered with uh, uh, a barrier, which can be, for example, uh, uh, the resist or something that we deposit over the resist. Then we do the same for the N-MOSFET, the P-Well implant and the VTN adjust. This is the adjustment of the threshold voltage of the N-MOSFET. So we only need the source of the drain and the, and the contacts. And uh, now we have this thin oxide layer, which is good to be used as the gate dielectric. So what we do is we deposit on top of it the gates, the gate for the N MOSFET and the gate for the P MOSFET in polysilicon. And then we use the polysilicon as a mask, as a barrier, in order to etch the silicon oxide where we do not want it. So we want the silicon oxide only under the gate, but not over the source and the drain. So we, we can etch them by... Uh, We can no. Uh, this is a, uh, oh, this is for so. Okay, I, um, I I neglected this step. Before removing the oxide, we we dope uh, the uh, the source and the drain. So we have M plus implantation for for the source and the drain of the N MOSFET. This is going to be the N MOSFET. So source and drain implantation. The the oxide is so thin that cannot act as a barrier and also we have uh, the implantation of p-doped or p-dopant for the p-mosfet in this situation okay so this implantation can is done in two different steps by using again barrier uh, the barrier layers Sim in, in a way similar to what we have done in order to uh, make the N-well and P-well implants. Uh, 
and the only the only thing is that we do not need to remove at this point the get oxide because it cannot act as as a barrier of course we also dope the polysilicon in the process because the polysilicon is not mass but it's it's useful to dope the polysilicon and then after that we remove the we need to etch the silicon to remove the silicon over the gate and to deposit the uh, insulator in order to put the metal layers on top so this is again an another insulator that we deposit in this case is silicon oxide then looking at everything from the top we only see silicon oxide and some holes in correspondence of the contacts of source and drain of all the MOSFETs okay. so we just need to deposit the metal after this so we can deposit the metal on top and then we have uh, the um, we basically have uh, already the structure of the inverter that I'm showing you at the beginning okay and then for each layer we need to pattern the layer and then we need to use a photolithographic step and some material that can act as a barrier typically it's the resist sometimes we can use uh, uh, materials that we already have in place depending on the on the type of of process that we need to do okay this is the second layer of metal okay uh, okay just let me conclude with with this uh, this picture uh, this is a picture of uh, j just to um, let you let, let you um, let's say un un understand the type of uh, complex structures that we obtain uh, in, in a typical modern process there are several several layers of metal in the most modern ones there are 10 layers of metal so I've shown you the first layer and we typically if we have a complex circuit with many interconnections we need to have several different levels so we have up to up now up to 10 layers and uh, in order to reduce uh, um, the, the resistivity of these metal layers since uh, 10 years no more than 10 years the, these metal layers are realized in copper it's a very difficult process because uh, copper is also a contaminant uh, so uh, it's difficult to use it and at the same time not contaminating all the rest of the silicon this is just a picture of a silicon chip in which uh, uh, after the fabrication all the insulator separating the different layers of metal has been removed just in order to take a picture so you, you can imagine that in in a real chip between all this uh, 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 red uh, uh, copper interconnections there are um, layers of insulators typically silicon oxide or other types of insulators and so it, this this picture is not really visible but uh, uh, it, it's nice to um, see it because it gives you the idea of how um, dense the interconnections are and how many layers there are so this picture is, is just a small picture of a much more complex chip and and you can see that the, the level of interconnections is is extremely high and there are several different layers one on top of the other of interconnections as I, as I mentioned before, now we have 10 in, in the most modern processes. Okay, we can uh, uh, stop here and we make a break and then we restart.